talking about uh, the ministry, you know, and how you're ministering to those who are hurt, those who have suffered, whether it's through forms of addiction. Uh, but to birth you into ministry, what was your life like before you got into that climate to where you were helping people? How was your life? How would you describe your life? Um, my life was very difficult. I lived a difficult life before I rededicated my life to the Lord. And uh, being a former drug user myself and being out there in the streets and I'm looking at the poverty and I'm looking at people that's bound mm -hmm. and caught in the system of never getting free. And I'm sitting there thinking about what my brother used to tell me, Elder David, and he say, what you did, what you do is like most people, you take the good senses that you have and put it down and pick up foolish sense. Mm -hmm. In other words, things that you learn from the street, you use that instead of what you were taught by your parents, people that really love you. And I look at people being caught up. And so when I made my mind up to rededicate my life to the Lord, uh, I, that gave me the desire to help other people that, that lost because they don't know how to get out. Mm -hmm. They don't know why they do what they do. And a lot of people that do drugs and alcohol and, and caught up in the poverty, it's mostly because they're hurt. And it's like putting a Band-Aid on an open wound. And you can't stop an open bleeding with a Band-Aid. You have to have surgery and stitches. So I showed them how to do it through Jesus Christ. But you have to forgive and forget. Most people stay bound on drugs and alcohol and never get off because they never forgive and forget what happened to them. Some was given away for adoption. That bothered them. That's a scar. Some were molested. Some uh, had people that they loved die in their lives at an early age, and they could not adapt to or understand why God took my mama when I was this age or my father or my brother. You know. And so they hide behind their hurt and you can't see it. So they find themselves grabbing onto cigarettes, drugs, and alcohol, prostitution, dealing with the wrong crowd, going into all the places looking for love, and they were saying they're all the wrong places. And I learned this being out there. So I tell them all the time, in order to get delivered, you gotta first accept Jesus Christ. Second of all, you gotta forgive and forget. You gotta let go. Because if you don't, you're gonna keep on reaching for that substance to hide the pain. And, and, and it would never hide the pain, only for a moment. And then you're right back to reality again, bound up. And a lot of our people are, are dying daily, going to jail and prison because of that. They don't know how to get out. Mm -hmm. They hear about Jesus, they hear about church, but they don't understand, they gotta forgive. They gotta let go. Cause a lot of people been hurt, you know. Mm -hmm. you know so. Wow, that's beautiful. And that's a, how do you, I think it's very powerful when you start talking about two things that really helps you in terms of a relationship with God. Uh, one of the things, like you said, is forgiveness uh, and how that has bound not only our relationships uh, with one another in terms of that, it's incarcerated our spirit, it's amputated our spirit to many aspects. And when it amputates or it divides us, we have that war that Paul talks about, when I want to do good, evil is always present, mm -hmm. and how we're constantly struggling. But more significantly, it also hinders our relationship with God to, to have the power to walk out this thing of forgiveness, this thing of love, uh, and how to do that. So talk a little bit in terms of the practical applications you give people to help them to uh, move into that realm, first of all, let's deal with forgiveness, because forgiveness, like you said, is very powerful. It is a, it is a bondage. Uh, it is a yoke that is strangling many people uh, because of the pain and the hurt that came behind why the symptom of forgiveness is there. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so what I do, I explain to them, this is what I do, and uh, the Lord blessed me to learn to do this. For well, the last couple of years of my life, um, I've always established what's called a morning devotion. When I wake up in the morning, I read at least one chapter from one of the particular books, and I go through the whole New Testament. It takes a while to do it, and I have prayer. This keeps me focused, because you have to stay focused, and you have to have the Word. 
because he, the enemy, he doesn't take vacation. He doesn't take breaks. And he sits and he waits for you to falter. So what we have to do is to stay focused. And so in doing this, what I do, do is I meditate in the Word daily. And the Psalm 1, blessed the man that meditate in day and night in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. We shall be blessed like the uh, trees by the rivers of water. So I've learned in doing this, uh, it keeps me focused and it gives me the strength. And I don't have no desire to go back to the things that I once knew because I have this connection and I'm focused at all times. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. And I don't cross every T and dot every I. But the desire for drugs and alcohol and to live a loose life, I don't have that desire because I'm focused now, you see. Mm -hmm. What yeah. most people go wrong, where most people go wrong, what they do is they start out on fire for the Lord. Right. Yeah. They go into church and then the enemy use somebody in the church to hurt them, say something, and now you got a, a baby in Christ that wounded. So the enemy tell them, you might well go on Mike, to what you used to do. Mm -hmm. So I tell them, stay focused. So when trouble come, you won't look to drugs and alcohol or whatever you were doing to satisfy your craving. You lean on the Lord, you trust his word. The scriptures will come up in your mind to keep you in those tough, in those tough times. And a lot of people, I, I've dealt with people from the mission and places and they do good for six months. They get out and then the first thing they wanna do is start dating. Mm. And they find themselves dating women that's not saved, that don't love the Lord. So now they open themselves up because sex is a spirit. And when you become sexually active, your body, your spirit become open see the, to the spirit that's on that person. Mm -hmm. If that person has drug demons or alcohol demons, those spirits get on you. Now you've been clean, I like you to be delivered. Delivered for some time. Now you're practicing a sinful act which cause that the enemy can get in on you now. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself wondering why am I longing to go back to this old life? Because you put yourself in a position. And I tell them young men that the mission and places to don't do that. You seek God first, and then if you're seeking a wife, make sure she's the woman that loves the Lord. Not just a church goer, but a woman that loves the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference. <laughs> and what's the difference there? Describe that in, in detail in terms of the difference in one who, who goes to church, which is supposed to be a symbol of loving the Lord because they're going to this assembly of believers who supposedly love the Lord. And so the 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 application of Lord knowing or loving the Lord is that you go to church. So how do you distinguish between the two when one who just goes to church and one who really loves the Lord who may not even go to church? So how do you, how do you break that down in your spirit to discern who truly is uh, the person for you? Well, the Bible teaches us out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in you going to come out? Mm. If you listen to a person long enough, what's in them going to come out? And if you're dating a woman or talking to a female and she goes to church or whatever, if she has the love of God in her, that conversation will be a lot on the Lord and her action as well. Mm -hmm. Church goer go through the ritual, sings in the choir, works in the church, but their action are the opposite of what the words say. Mm -hmm. So you know that person is not mature or rooted and grounded or saved. So you have to and you have to watch this carefully because a lot of people can put on an act and you know and go to church and look like they really love the Lord, but in their private lives and everyday life they don't have that love for the Lord. They don't talk about Him. He's not first in their life. And when a man have come off or a woman has come off a drug addiction, an alcohol addiction, they need to be with somebody that's sold out for the Lord because once they become angry or hurt, they're going to go right back to where they came from because they're not strong enough to stand up. So I tell people, you have to stay focused and make sure that the person you're trying to get involved with love the Lord, and they're going to show in their action, not just words. Mm -hmm. Anybody can quote scriptures, but, the, but your lifestyle is speech. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful. And I know 
that you are embodying the lifestyle, one, by service.